Hey guys, welcome back to part two of our Build a Pre-Shape Skateboard. Uh, this is Cash, my name's Marcel, and uh, we're going to take our board out of the bag today and uh, do some woodworking and hopefully we can finish this off. Um, so we're gonna start by uh, taking the board out of the bag. This has been sitting here for uh, eight hours or overnight and uh, the glue is all dried up, so uh, why don't we take her out? Now, as you're opening up the bag, you're gonna to wanna to be a little delicate with the sealing tape. Um, it's replaceable, but you can dirty it up with finger grease, uh, styrofoam bits, and sawdust. So as you're opening it up, try to uh, keep as much of that stuff off as possible. Now the first thing you're gonna do, just to help out with that, is uh, take the sticker backing and uh, replace it right away. Hopefully you guys threw it in the bag as well. And this will help keep all of the dust and grime and grease off of that ceiling strip so that you can have it last as long as possible. All right. Uh, if, uh, if you find you're having trouble pulling the board out of the bag, uh, a couple things you can do first before doing the ceiling tape is maybe open up the valve uh, and allow some air back into the bag, as well as stretch the bag, you know, kind of separate it from the board. This will help loosen it up, and uh, you should be able to slide the whole deal out. Right on. Once you got your board out, you know, you're gonna wanna keep your bag health as healthy as possible, so we'll fold it up. And get it out of the way. All right guys, let's take this thing to the back and do some uh, woodworking. So we've uh, unbagged our board and we're ready to start the finishing on it. Um, a couple notes about uh, setting yourself up for working on this. You're gonna wanna use a couple clamping systems. Uh, it's kind of tricky to work on this with just your hands. Um, so today we're gonna be using this jaw horse, but you can use uh, like clamping this board to the side of a table will work. Uh, and if you know, it comes down to it, you can always just hold it between your legs and just kind of work on it as you go. Um, but we're gonna set up in our jaw horse. So Jason's uh, gonna be scraping away on uh, our board. Well, what you'll notice when you first take your board out of the bag is that your edges don't really line up. Uh, that's just the nature of pressing up a board with, uh, with the pre-cut shape. What he's doing right now is he's just making everything flush. The scraper that you get in your kit will do uh, really, really quick work with this. Basically, all you want to do is line up your elbow or your shoulder with the edge of the board and then just pull straight. Uh, make sure to scrape from the middle towards the ends of the board or in other words with the grain. So every now and then you'll notice that uh, your board may not have lined up super nicely and you'll end up with one or maybe two veneers that are really deep. Fortunately that's just part of the process. Uh, if that's the case you're gonna have to scrape all six or five layers right down to that one veneer that's stuck in there. If it's right on the edge, you might be able to get away with not scraping down to it, uh, and you'll see why in the next stage. So now that we've got a flushed edge, we're going to introduce a bit of a tapered edge to it. Uh, the goal here is we're trying to get a nice rounded edge, sort of the kind you get from a commercial skateboard you bought at the store. Um, but we need to do a couple steps in between uh, to make life easier for us. So the first is we're going to introduce uh, a tapered edge. Uh, Jason's going to take uh, the same scraper we used for the last step uh, and instead of holding it flat against the surface of the board, he's going to hold it at a 45 degree angle. So this will let him introduce you know, a tapered edge. We're going to do it on the bottom of the board and the top of the board. And this will start to introduce your, uh, your rounded edge. The goal here is to go for consistency you can use the glue lines in between each veneer layer as your guide. They're parallel with each other all across the board, so as long as you stay within the lines, you should be good. Now that we've got our tapered edge, uh, we're going to introduce the rounding. Uh, so for this stage, you're gonna need some sandpaper and, uh, and a little bit of elbow grease. Uh, Jason will show us how it's done here. You're basically going to want to hold your sandpaper uh, on both edges, uh, both sides rather, of your board and uh, just go back and forth. Sweet! 
That looks really good. So now's a good time to drill the truck holes. Uh, with every set in your kit, you will receive a bottom sheet that will have the holes pre-drilled. Use those as your guide. Uh, now kids, this is the only time we're gonna use a power tool for the build, so you may wanna grab a parent to help you out. So we're gonna grab our power drill and our 13 64ths drill bit. And we're gonna drill from the bottom. Now you're gonna wanna drill straight, but if you don't, that's okay because we're gonna be drilling from the bottom, which means that your base plate will line up with the holes no matter what. Perfect. Now we've got our holes, all we've got left to do is uh, surface sand and clear coating. So let's head back over to the uh, sanding table. In your kit, you will get two different sandpaper grits. Uh, one will be a little more coarse than the, the other. Uh, so let's start with the coarse one. Uh, when you sand your board, uh, you're going to want to sand with the grain uh, back and forth. Don't do any circular patterns or going uh, against the grain. That will make the job a little bit longer than it needs to be, as well as leave uh, like unsightly scratch marks in the surface of your board. Um, you're going to want to sand all over the surface, the top and the bottom, as well as all of the edges, uh, and just do it until you've got uh, something that feels really nice to the touch. Um, once you've finished that, then you can move on to the finer grit sandpaper uh, and just do it on the bottom of the board. That will give you a nice, smooth feeling surface. Uh, that way, when you're doing your graphics, you don't feel any of the chunks of working on uh, like a wood surface. So uh, take it away, Cash. All right, so we finished sanding and uh, our board is looking pretty good and ready for a layer of clear coat. Uh, we've moved from the sanding table because we want to stay in a dust-free environment for this step. Um, you can also go a step further with a damp cloth and just give your board a quick wipe. Get rid of any sawdust that's left in the surface. And we're set to go. Uh, you won't find this in the kit, but today we're going to use an outdoor style varathane. Uh, you should be able to find this at any hardware store near you. Uh, so let's get started. For your first coat, you're going to want to apply a nice, thin, and even layer. Uh, the goal here is to just get the clear coat into the grain of the wood. Uh, make sure that we don't have any bubbles drying in the clear coat or any uneven uh, mist spots. Always helps to go and apply your clear coat with the grain, just like how you were sanding. Uh, it just makes it easier to spot any uh, mistakes or mist areas. Make sure that you cover the rails as well as the surface. And at this stage, it's always a good idea to kind of, you know, get underneath and look and see if you've got any bubbles or dripping happening. Um, you can just take your damp cloth or your sponge and give it a quick wipe. All right, and then uh, reapply any clear coat if you need to. Now that we've done the top, we're all set to flip this over and do the bottom. Uh, it's Usually a good idea to start with the top because then you don't need to wait for it to dry. This will save you a bit of time and uh, you know it'll leave some divots in the clear coat because we're using little triangles to hold our board up. But that's okay because we're going to apply a layer of grip tape to the top anyway so you won't notice those. Looks pretty good to me. So I think we can let this dry. Um, this stuff that we're using here takes about 10 to 15 minutes to dry to the touch, but uh, refer to the instructions of your product uh, just to get a little bit more specific. Um, once this is dried, we're going to apply a second and a third coat. Uh, those are just to uh, you know, further reinforce the protection. You can apply a nice liberal heavy layer of clear coat for uh, layers two and three. Uh, and if you're doing graphics on the bottom of your sheet, um, you, it's, uh, you can always do it before layer number three and apply that third coat on top of your graphics just to protect your artwork from getting scratched off. Um, once that's done, uh, we're all set. We'll let our board dry. 
usually best results will leave it uh, curing overnight, but uh, as soon as this is dry to the touch, it's essentially ride ready. Hey, so this has been our pre-shaped skateboard build. For Cash, I'm Marcel, and uh, thanks for watching, everyone. If you have any questions or comments, hit us up below in the, in the comments section, or you can give us a phone call, send us an email. We're always available to help you guys out with your builds. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next time.